Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. It is Local Chat episode 86. I looked at the date when I went to say the episode number. Now I'm all confused like a little boy in the Catholic Church. Folks, joining me this week, the one, the only, Kyle Bailey. Hi, I'm here. And also joining us, Christopher from the Saved Data. I have an idea. <gasps> what is that? It's a light... Okay, folks. It, folks like, on the audio podcast, it's a it's a light. You can yeah. like mount it on top of your camera really easily. Oh. And it's, it, I thought it was like a like a card reader. Or I something. thought it was a card yeah. reader too. <laughs> it's basically like the same ones I have. Like you can like go up and down from like all the lumens from like oh. tungsten to blue. That's great. Don't you hate getting birthday cards that you can't read? <laughs> <laughs> Man, I hope in the future they send birthday cards on SD cards. It's like oh, birthday card. And you pop it in, and it's just like hardcore porn. But I hope <laughs> birthdays go away. I'm over them. I'm over them, folks. They're a fad. That's what I say. Yeah, you're over them right before my birthday, so you don't have to get me anything. Yeah, I'm not yeah. coming anymore. <laughs> no more. <laughs> the jar's almost full, Chris. You have to finish. Uh, no. Folks, we are going to talk about video games and jars and where we put them. Um, and what goes in them? And what goes oh in them? <laughs> Pillsbury Doughboy. Uh, before we get to the news, though, we have to talk about what we have been playing. I'm going to go first because nothing has changed, folks. I've talked about if Ian was here, he would do his <sighs> and then go COVID and all that. So I've been playing Fallout New Vegas. I've been playing Talking Farthest the Frontier. Fake. I've been playing Arcade Paradise. But this week I picked up Dusk, which is an incredible. Now, which shooter. Dusk is this? Because there's like four fucking games named Dusk. This is the Dusk that is a retro shooter like Doom and Doom Two. Uh, it is great. It is awesome. There's also a Dusk. Ah, oh, this looks nice. Something else that they also made, which is a puzzle game for the looking like it's for the C64 Commodore 64. Um, so it's super fun. I played it on stream on Tuesday. There was a lovely man or woman named or or thing uh, named Hooded Death, I'm pretty sure. And they stuck with me the entire stream and just chatted with me, uh, told me all about their favorite games, told me all about their favorite TV shows. It was a great time. Uh, that game all about is their favorite wives. That game is way scarier than I thought it would be. Um, I'm used to doom levels where they're wide and open and I think it was level three. Well, first of all, level one, you wake up in a basement and there's men with chainsaws. Um, and like they're a yelling day for you. at you. And then level three is just in a mine shaft and you're just closed in the entire time. Uh, hello cat. Um, and it's just wild. Um, so I kept getting spooked, a little scared the whole time. I just played it before this stream, and I still got a little scared, where I'm, like, checking behind me to, like, make sure no one's coming to kill me. Make sure uh, Karen's not there. Yeah, she just, she just, I'll just turn around, she's there with a knife. Uh, <laughs> just waiting. Uh, just checking on me, honey. looks so comfortable. I'm sorry. Oh, yes. Pepper, yeah, he Pepper. he loves this. I couldn't remember he also, the cat's name. He also loves coming into my office at all hours of the day and screaming at me. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Uh, now it's kind of his thing. Named after the main character of Lego Island, Bold. Uh, yes, of I course. Uh, I want to name him after the fucking pizza guy, the Brickster. But uh, if anyone, oh, uh, <laughs> excuse me, the Brickster's the criminal. You're thinking of Papa and Mama. No, I'm uh, thinking of the Brickster. <laughs> he's bricked up all the time. I'm in fact Brickster. always thinking of the Brickster. <laughs> I'm always. I may be talking about someone else, but I'm thinking of the Brickster. <laughs> I got that full back tattoo. <laughs> like yakuza style (laughs) i i think i said before if we if we get like uh if we break like fifteen thousand dollars in like an extra life at some point i'll get a full like yakuza style back tattoo of carpet the frog i'll do that (laughs) sipping the tea or just like tea images around him Um, tea images around him that's pretty good i would like that um yeah so dusk is super fun i'm having a i mean it's from 2018 it's been around for a while people love it um i don't I was just going to say, I think it's uh, Revolver Digital. It screams Revolver Digital. Devolver Digital, sorry. (laughs) Devolver Digital. Um, Gun Digital. Gun Digital. Uh, It screams Um, that to me. I don't know if it actually is, but uh, 
Um, it might be. Anyways, that's what I've been playing. I, it's just more of the same. I've been very busy. And when I am not busy, I haven't been playing video games. I need to put something on my Switch to play. Because uh, Majora's Mask... Uh, I was actually telling you about this, Chris, last weekend. Majora's Mask is not a half-pay-attention-to game, even though I've played no. it before. Uh, like Ocarina of Time is to me. So I need to put something on my Switch that is that. Uh, I just need to find it. It'll happen. I know it'll happen. Anyways, uh, that's what I've been playing. Uh, Kyle, your list interests me more than Chris. So I'd like to know what you've been playing. Uh, well, it's the same as last time I was on. It's still Elden Ring. Uh, second playthrough, playing with my friend. Still have not tried out that mod that r basically removes all of the multiplayer barriers. Mm -hmm. As in, like, the, the level gating stuff it kind of does. Only it's, like, backwards. It's really weird. I don't know why they chose to do that. Something about Japanese developers and like online multiplayer in the modern day, just like they don't mix for some reason. Nope. I, I, I don't get it. I mean, Nintendo is sort of like the main offender, but FromSoft is just, it's so, it's the choices they make are weird and I don't like them all the time, but whatever. Um, so still playing through that. But uh, this next thing, much like the last time I was on where I was, you know, testing out my PC because I just built it. Uh, I got literally yesterday a Raspberry Pi uh, Gen 4 or whatever it is. Uh, I've never had one before, but I've always wanted one just so that I can try making some different things. And the first thing I wanted to try was to make a Pi Hole, which is basically a um, router covering uh, advertise, adver advertisement blocker kind of thing. Yeah. So I set mm. that up today. It took me like two hours um, to figure everything out. But I love doing stuff like that. I love tinkering. Um, both with like the physical hardware, but then also getting into the software and learning uh, whatever little bits of code I can, and then pulling stuff off of GitHub. And GitHub is awesome. I love, I love GitHub. It's it's amazing. But I got it working. It's right over here next to my next to my uh, router and 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 modem and everything. It's working great. So I I love stuff like that. It's great. Nice, awesome. I have, I have like four Raspberry Pis. I think I have two ones, a three, and a four. And I have yeah. not done anything with them because I get into, I'm pretty sure I, on all of them, I have set up them being like a um, retro game thing. And then like I yeah. get uh, like soft locked thinking about where I'm going to put it and how I'm going to play these games. And when I'm done, like the, the experimentation is the fun for me. So when I'm done setting it up, it's like, ah, I'll put it back in its box now. Um, yeah. But I should set up a pile. The nice thing about it is it's just like if you screw something up, you can literally just wipe it and start over. And it's yeah. so the process is so fast and easy. Um, like I Mochi, my cat, obviously, he, he uses my desktop, which is like right here to jump up onto my desk. And 30 percent of the time he steps on the power button and just shuts off my computer. So it's like, mm. right. I had the I had the the um, it's called. Uh, I forget what it's called, but it, it's like a, like a really dumbed down version of like one of the Pi OSs. And um, I was I had the terminal open and I was like typing in commands and it was like an open process and he shut off my computer. And I was worried that it was going to like screw everything up. And I was like, this better not like hurt like any any part of my network that I have set up. It's like precarious and it was fine. It was totally fine. Um, so I love stuff that's purpose built to sort of be like hacked into and and yeah you know stuff that's sort of modular and it's 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 a great little product and i'm really interested to see like what other projects i think i could do like if i got more there was i think there was one God, i was looking through one of like the github repositories where it just lists like hey somebody worked on this project somebody worked on this project and one of them was like oh man i can't remember exactly what it was but it was something like the retro game sort of thing that you had you you had talked about where mm -hmm. it was sort of like you could side load stuff onto it really easily and that that just seems way way my style so i'm pumped if anybody who's watching has any uh projects that they recommend me trying or, or cool things that you've done with uh, raspberry pis let us know in the comments do y'all know about yeah. the play date what is it play date it's uh it's a raspberry pi console yeah will knows what i'm talking about uh it's by the people who did the untitled goose game the publisher not the, not the devs oh. um it's like a little raspberry pi uh six button console with a crank on the side and you get new oh. micro Raspberry Pi games every week. That's so cool. Wait, so it's powered by cranking? No, the crank's a gimmick. 
Oh, okay. uh, it's like it's like it's like your so you have like a D pad A and B, and then you also have the crank. Mm. So like the the, if there's a if there's a fishing mini game, you get to use the uh, crank. <gasps> the crank. That's awesome. Um, and I assume other things of that crank. Uh, <laughs> the crank. <laughs> You get the star in the movie Crank with Jason Statham. He just shows up. He goes, what about oh, Crank 2? High no, Crank 2. So, I was about crazy. to say, sorry, please. I need the full title of Crank 2 High Voltage. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, yeah. It's Crank 2 High Voltage is there, but Crank 2 is yes. not there. Um, yeah, I have a bunch of Raspberry Pis. You you make me want to do something with them. Uh, do it. I, I heard like Weather Station stuff is really uh, fun. And now mm. that I'm saying that, I could literally put a weather station out there. So maybe I will do that. Um, do I also, but the retro stuff I stopped doing once I got my Mister, which is another thing that I got the Mister, set up all the FPGA cores, like got everything ready, played one game, and then put it in a drawer. <laughs> like the fun <laughs> was over. Um, so that's exciting. I'm glad you're doing that. I I I aspire to do something with my Raspberry Pis one day. Yeah, um, well, especially especially like the 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 version that I have, the four. I checked to see like, oh, maybe I can get another one. They're like sold out. They're oh, like, yeah, they're like gone. I had no idea it was so rare. So. I didn't know that either until I saw Ian on Twitter tw retweet like a Wario sixty four type person, but for tech stuff. Mm -hmm. And he was like, "Thank you, I finally got one." And I'm just sitting here like, "Oh, I had no idea they were like impossible to get." But it makes sense. Yeah, they're probably pretty low on the chip. Uh bill of sale or delivery yeah. whatever it is um but that's exciting the requisition list the requisition yeah. um which just remind me did i put um i'll put it on here uh anyways chris i saw you got your taco bell so we can talk about that i did but we'll I get to that at the saw, end um I, I also saw saul goodman he's here um he's involved. i also want you to talk about the games you've been playing please cult of the lamb is a video game <laughs> Where you're a lamb, and you're on a cult. Boom. It's a it, it's a roguelike. It's got uh hit men. It's got rolling and dodging. It's got weapons, and it's got cult based stuff. You're on a cult. You sacrifice your boys. You do rituals and the like. Uh, as far as that goes, hey, this game's pretty fucking good. Yeah, uh, it, it, it's it's pretty bare bones. There's not you know other than the cult stuff. Sentence as you say. Other than the cult stuff, there's not a lot going on. <laughs> Um, because it's just like a you know it's a pretty generic roguelike, but yeah. like the art style's cute, uh, the music's good, and you get to r run an adorable little cult, and that's pretty okay. I'm into that. So uh, <coughs> I've heard from many people, many many people. They write in, they say, "Dear Will, Cult of the Lamb." Uh, the sim part is a lot better than the other part. Yeah, yeah, managing the cult is a lot more interesting than the fighting. Mm-hmm. It's a, I mean, like, you know, it's a roguelike, but it's a lot of mashing B and sometimes rolling to dodge. Oof. I also heard um, sometimes it's better to kick instead of dodging. Whoa, that might uh, be one too many mechanics for me. I don't oof. know if I can handle that. Oof. Sometimes you hit triangle to do a thing. Um, <laughs> Wait, you have triangle yeah. and B on the same controller? I know. It's crazy. I'm, I'm not even going to try. This is this Are you is on an much. Ouya? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I exclusively use the Ouya controller, <laughs> like a real gamer. Um, I mod yeah, for I, every I, system. I, I mean, one of my bigger complaints would be like, yeah, the combat is pretty shallow, and so like playing it on a higher difficulty, instead of like adding variety, it just enemies hit harder and take um, less damage, which is not a good difficulty scaling. It's a fine difficulty scaling, but it's not a good one. Yeah. Um, that's Cult of the Lamb. Get into it. Uh. The other one is, and this is going to make Will Crosby and Ian Gibson come. Oh my. It's called Everspace 2. It's a game where you're, you're a space boy. You're in space. You fly a ship. You can get various different ships, and you go out and do odd jobs for people in the galaxy. Like you're like a... You're like, a like from James space, Bond? Like a, yes. You, do, you bring small Asian men with hats to the galaxy. Um, no, you go out and like you do mercenary stuff or you escort people and you get paid currency and you shoot r bandits and you get to be a cool ace pilot and you do boss fights and you fly through rings like Superman. <gasps> One of my favorite games. It's behind me. You buy new ships, you, you, you get better guns, you level up. 
So this is like Eve Online, but not as in spreadsheet. It's Eve, it's Eve Online, but you actually get to play a video game and don't have to open Excel at any point. Um, do you ever get out of the vehicle, a la No Man's Sky? Uh, no. The closest is you go to like space stations and talk to people. So okay, yeah. I'm in the menus. Now. Can you delicious yeah, I'm, menus? I'm digging it. Uh, there's a demo available for download on the Steam what? network. Download uh, Steam Network of games, folks. You can download Steam Network. So this is weird because the first game in this franchise was just a roguelike. What was the first one called? Everspace. It was still called Everspace Two, but yeah, <laughs> yeah part one. there just what wasn't there wasn't a dash or something. That one, that one was actually called Cult of the Space. It's strange. <laughs> um, and this one isn't a roguelike, so there's that. That's pretty hmm. good. So it's like a persistent. Yeah. Are are you? Are there other people? Or you're in your own world doing your own thing. You're in your own world doing your own thing, but there are various AI and NPC that roam around doing their own thing. And it's persistent, so you like you save and then pick up right where you started. Yeah, cool. That's neat. You have to save. You have to say like at a space station, but other than that, yeah. Okay. I'm gonna add it to my wish list. Yeah. This looks also, cool. I'm I gonna would... try out that demo. It's just it's 14 and a half gigabytes. So. Yeah. Oh. Would... I'm never logged into Steam on uh, the internet, on my Chrome browser. He's only logged in on know. his intranet. And then I downloaded a forever ago. This was year year days ago. I I downloaded a thing that would redirect Steam links to Steam, but then it got oh. to the point where I couldn't like I couldn't go to any Steam page without it redirecting to Steam. So, like, hmm. I couldn't even, like, click on a thing to see something quick. It would just open up Steam and go to the page. So, I think I was trying to have my cake and eat it, too, and I'd rather just think about the cake and not eat it. So, I'll just, I'll wish list it. I'll remember to wish list it. If I have one thing, it's my memory, folks. Um, anyways, uh, what do we do next? Uh, we, review, we, we review <laughs> Taco Bell. Yeah, we, oh, yeah, let's do Taco Bell. I want to do that. For the so, audio listeners, yeah. you can go fuck yourselves. Uh, yeah, this one's just for us. <laughs> this one's just for the boys. Tell me what it sounds <laughs> this like. This for halucha. So, so this is a <laughs> double steak cheese, a grilled cheese burrito. I have, oh my I have God. had that. It is, Avail it is uh, quite tasty. It is available at Taco Bell. It's either new or it just came back. I don't care. You, did you get a Mexican pizza? Wait, you gotta well, take a, one bite of every item now. <laughs> unwrap them. Just go down the line. This could be spicier. Did this you could did be you get spicier. any did you get any hot sauce? I have some, but not available at my desk, and I'm not gonna go get it. <laughs> this this is the Crunch Wrap Supreme. You're familiar. Yes, we're familiar. Classic. I don't like it. I, I wish I liked it. It has to okay. It has to be made properly. Like maybe that's if it's my not, problem. If it's not like steaming hot and, and the everything's gotten soggy. Um, it's not, it's not good. Crunch Wrap Supreme is great, because at worst case scenario, you fold it up into a ball and shove and it in your fucking it. mouth. And then you, you see, eat it like the fucking, fucking pig you are. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything, but... Anyway, that was Taco Bell time. It's Taco pretty Bell good. Time good, was... good choices. Yes, thank you for that. It was fantastic. We all loved it. Didn't we, everybody? Uh, New segment. This podcast is sponsored by Taco Bell. It's fun. We're there sponsored by Del Taco. It's crazy that that whole segment. Is that <laughs> We're like crazy. Jack in the Box. Like, come yeah. on. do these play here? Uncle loves the Bible. His guidebook to so. I guess they do. Um, I'm sorry. What was that about the Bible? Coco Have you loves never... survival. Well, someone doesn't watch Sunday service. Uncle loves uh, the I Bible. do actually. His guidebook to survival. Hey, let's go, Bongo. Sit down. Anyways, that's the Bongo song. That should be our new song. Zach, if you could whip up a new one to that team. Here's the Jesus. We're talking, <laughs> talking about, about Christ. Jesus. It's gamer Jesus. What's up, Jews? <laughs> what? Because it rhymes with news. Oh, okay. And, and Jesus was Jewish. This is not that big of a leap. I don't think he was. I think that's a lie. Historically inaccurate. <laughs> Uh, that's a lie. Uh, anyways, folks, uh, it's time for the news, which I should probably play the news theme. Um, it's by a man. Uh, let's play it. <laughs> 
He's playing Mario Here's Party. the news, it's gaming news. We're talking about news. What's up, news? But now there's more to the song, so you can sing along, and it won't bore you, though, unlike Factorio. Kingdom Hearts was played by Ian, and he really loved Pirates of the Caribbean. But we don't want to have a vocal spat, so let's bring it back to your local chat. Thank you so much, Zach, for that delicious memory Re of a song. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Your love will continue in the stars um, until, the, until it doesn't. Um... <laughs> James Webb will see it until it makes scary noises. Folks, uh, a lot of news this week. Uh, topical from... black hole Is... jokes, folks. Topical black that... hole jokes. You can hear them, folks. You can hear my black hole. Uh, folks, we're going to talk about the news. It's gaming news. Uh, I figured we would open up this week with some Gamescom opening night live announcements. I have a here listed unfortunately a polygon link um to i'm just kidding a polygon link to all the um things that were announced now unlike uh another member who will occasionally air on these podcasts uh who screams at me for posting these and says we don't have time to talk about it, all this stuff i simply like to say it's just a refresher we don't have to talk about all this stuff we talk about the fun things folks um, so we're going to start and go through each one of these items line by line. Anyways, uh, starting off, they have announced everywhere. Thank God. This is the prequel to everything. 2017 the... had everything. 2022 will have everywhere. And 2027 will have all at once. All at once. <laughs> uh, uh, that is not my joke. I stole that. Uh, this looks like, uh, from the trailer, a GTA-like game where you can do a bunch of different things, do all kinds of stuff, and then at the very end, it cuts to a different graphic style of another person playing the game that you were just watching. So, like, it's supposed to be, like, this sort of GTA rival thing. I believe, um, this is from developer Build a Rocket Boy. Uh, I believe they're former GTA devs. Uh, if I'm remembering that correctly from a news article I read, uh, it looks interesting. Uh, check it out. I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna check it out. But they did like this Marvel logo reveal where it just like showed all this different stuff. And like I said at the very end, it like, well, not in this trailer, but in the other. Have trailer. they have they oh, made no, anything else? Build a Rocket Boy. I believe this is their first game. Uh, okay. Yeah. Also, so I'm curious if their if their name is a reference to the elbow. Uh, do you guys know the band Elbow? Uh, they have a lyric, "Build a Rocket Boy." It's I don't know. I I like that band a lot, but now I now am... you've got me thinking about it. So. Is she related to Bill De Blasio? I don't know. <laughs> what? Bill De Rocket Boy? No, uh, Cali. Uh, <laughs> oh, I thought you were making some sort of elbow reference, <laughs> like. I was gonna say it's I was like, like well, 1950s British, political so cartoon. So, but... It's like Bill De Blasio only eats elbow noodles. What a boss! He loves this game. <laughs> he doesn't need angel hair. Um, next up, they announced uh, Dune Awakening, which is from Funcom, who made the incredible. I like to say incredible. I got my time out of it. Conan Barbarian, Conan Exiles game, which you can have huge dongs in or huge breasts in. I will let you know. Um. They I've made never that game. been more disappointed hearing that something was an MMO. Um, yeah, I I don't. So it's a survival open world MMO. I don't know if I should look up. Actually, if someone wants to look it up, if Conan Exiles is billed as an MMO, because it is a like survival. You do servers. You can run a private server sort of thing. And I don't know if that's considered MMO um, or not. I don't. I don't think so, because that would be the same thing as Minecraft. Um, so Steam has it as an online multiplayer survive survival game. Okay, so maybe this will have more MMO elements to it. Um, but if it's anything like Conan Exiles, where you can just enslave people um, and have them then do it's, things then for it's you. it's Will's game of the year. It, <laughs> dude, I don't know how to explain. It's a game I could never stream, but me, my brother, and our friend had an absolute time with that game where we would go into towns kill everyone 
take the you would tie the slaves up to like the the leashes and you would just drag them back to your camp you are not <laughs> helping the case and like you would have to like check to see if they're like how much better they are at like pushing the wheel to like grind your grain and everything and you could have the women dance next to you at your throne which is a thing i definitely did so how is it different from regular life um well, the dancers have the, are off at night here, so can you can you have the men dance by your? I, I believe you I can mean, have the men dance completely okay. naked, okay. Um, Great. the way God intended. God intended. Um, I'm kind of excited for that. I mean, obviously, they just showed like a cinematic trailer. It's probably a ways off. Who knows if it what Dune elements it'll have? If it'll have anything to do with Paul Atreides, uh, or any of that stuff. So we'll find out. I'm kind of excited about that. Are you either of you Dune fans? Very much so. Very, very big Dune fan. But uh, I really would like a, a solo, like, single-player entry in that universe. I made it 100 pages into the book and said, I'm not doing this. <laughs> yeah, I I made it 100 pages into that book about 10 times before I finally read the whole thing. Those first 100 pages, that, that Dune is a book that throws you into the universe and doesn't explain anything at all, ever. Yes, uh, and yes. it worked on the 11th time, but... Yeah, I, I which I, by the I way I respect. Yeah, um, yeah, Wheel of Time did that too, and I powered through it, and now I'm on book four. Um, yeah, it's interesting. I, well, it'll be fun to follow that and see what's like. I, if it's anything again like Conan Exiles, um, I can see. Uh, watch Conan Exiles not be by Funcom at all. Um, I can see them just having like a you can single player the MMO side of it, you know. Um, yeah, and that all be okay. Anyways, moving on here, they showed another trailer for Hogwarts Legacy. It doesn't matter. They announced the leaked new Tales from the Borderlands, which is coming in October. Uh, Dead Island 2, that trailer also leaked. Uh, I believe... No, no, sorry. The, um, the, uh, the release date leaked. The trailer did not leak. Uh, little, little less. Uh, I forgot they had revealed that at E3. That looks kind of fun. It's interesting. The lady uh, on stage talking to Jeff mentioned that they rebuilt it from the ground up four years ago. So it'll be like not a ton came out of that first trailer. So I don't know how much DNA it has with the original Dead Island 2, if any. Um, so it'll be I'm curious to see what it ends up being and if I'll like it. I've never played Dead Island. I played Dying Light 1. Uh, which I really enjoyed. I had fantastic co-op in that game, but I've never touched uh, Dead Island or obviously I haven't touched Dead Island 2. Uh, so that'd be fun to check out. Excuse me. Spaghetti burps. Um, Callisto Protocol showed us some folks. more gameplay. Uh, gameplay was in actually the gameplay was super boring. I was interested to see more Callisto Protocol it comes out in December. Um, it just looks like Dead Space. <laughs> Yeah, they have like cool exactly like Dead Space mutated enemies. I'm excited for that. I mean, it's Glenn Schofield. I'm excited that he's doing more of these. Dead Space Three sucked. Um, yep. Skipping all the animes. This Friends versus Friends uh, had a cool animation style, and you're like uh, an arena uh, fighting team, or like uh, what's it called when it's all for one, one for all, free for all, free for all. Battle Thank Royale. you. Uh, it looked like that, and you're, like, playing cards to get new weapons and stuff while you're running around shooting. I had a very interesting I, art I style to it. I the art style, yeah. Um, both the art style of the cinematics and the art style of the game were both pretty unique. Uh, I think they did a good job bringing that out. Um, so we'll see what it is. Uh, seems like a card-based shooter. Friends versus friends. Uh, skipping Park Beyond. This was announced, like, a year or two ago? Because I really remember the people from the trailer... It's some theme park game. I don't know why, like, it was such a, not a core memory, but it, like, I was like, oh, this. It's like they're in some, like, weird Willy Wonka thing, and the guy's like, make, you can make your dreams come true. And the lady glues a cardboard roller coaster to a cardboard wing, and then it turns into the roller coaster and flies away. And I'm like, all those people are going to die on this winged roller coaster. Lies of P. It is a. Dark Souls like game. Uh pretty much the rest of this. Uh oh, Killer Clowns from Outer Space, the game from the from the Friday the thirteenth people. Uh which I want it's just what what? Okay. Um the most annoying game ever from Justin Roiland. Moving out to yeah. 
if you if no one here has played or no one listening has played moving out um fantastic co-op game you are moving stuff out of obviously out of people's houses into um the moving truck and you have to like do like the grippy hands that are fun in like indie games uh great time i believe the rats are evil i think is what the story was karen and i played through it um and that's it. I think that's it. Homeworld 3, they showed off again. Well, they showed off again. Dorf Romantic. Will Crosby. Oh, sorry. I just scrolled down to the bottom. Oh, the... I don't. I, I Is that what I'm talking about? Oh, what are you talking about? Oh, well. Oh, yeah. You should have talked about that. How the fuck am I talking about that? I am um, going to talk but, about it. But I'm talking about a game that I'm shocked didn't make you come. Moonbreaker, Will? Oh, yes. Moonbreaker's cool. I it's you cool. can paint it's really the miniatures cool. well it is yes i will mention this one sorry moonbreaker from uh the makers of subnautica which by the way brandon, weird that it's by them yeah uh, and brandon sanderson of completing wheel of time and mistborn fame um <laughs> it is a XCOM like where you have miniatures on the map and you are fighting with the miniatures they're a little bit the miniatures don't animate but they like the full miniature like animates like in like a funny way like someone's grabbing it and doing stuff with it and then you can paint the miniatures like you're painting miniatures in real life and all the miniatures in the game were painted with that tool that is in the game which i think is honestly incredible as someone who's just got into mini painting and absolutely sucks at it um it, it, i'm glad you brought this up because it looks really fun i like xcom like games uh i like mini painting i like the design of this like it's it's sticking with a like like so many games could do this and then just animate the characters and stuff but i feel like they're sticking with the decision of like these are these are like toys that you're playing with and this is what it's going to look like and and i think that's super cool um and then i was gonna say finally uh they announced playstation announced the dual sense edge which is a uh xbox elite controller like where you can swap out sticks you can change there's a function button you can change the back pad stuff you can buy new stick modules and replace them and that changes things for games i guess um and also has haptic feedback like normal so if you want, they didn't announce anything about price or when it's coming, but they announced that uh, because their PRs working overtime, everybody. It'll uh, certainly have a better battery than the regular one, though. Yes. Oh, is the regular one's not good? No, it sucks. Hi, Ooh. Halucha. Thanks for dropping by. I'll see you in the VOD. Love you. Bye. <laughs> um, they also announced Thanks the Pokemon car that all gamers can afford. The Mini Cooper based off poke it's the ace man it's an electric just like pikachu and he can be the you don't get squirrel on it it's electric um yeah it looks it, i don't know why they announced a car like i know why they announced a car because minnie's like this is the perfect Money. opportunity to announce a car it's got pikachu in it um i'm sorry. gamers love that i i can't you're i can't believe you're not talking about Oh, I'm uh, saving it for last, because it's the best thing. Okay. All I right. can't believe it's um, not butter. Folks. <laughs> following in the footsteps of giants, Hideo Kojima has decided to make a podcast about himself. Uh, he is doing a podcast where he's interviewing people, doing things, um, speaking in Japanese, uh, being on Spotify, just probably eking out his you weird, draw a dare kojima thing his stuff uh probably like asmr stuff uh he's have a pod he has a podcast on spotify and it's coming out on my birthday uh i can't think of a better present be. from my best friend um also the numbers for chasing kojima went up uh because people are looking for that podcast um zach of save data fame has begrudgingly said he would do another episode um, so maybe there's another episode, uh, in the can, but, uh, knowing him probably won't be. I knowing get him a new scheduling. I'll, I'll just get a new in. co-host. I mean, I'll sub in. Yeah, you can sub in. He'll probably be. If fan. only, if only there was someone you knew for longer than you knew Zack Schneider. 
who maybe you worked with, who also t- likes to fancy those Hideo Kojima games. Does George like Hideo Kojima? <laughs> no, Marcus does. Chris, if I had known you like you wanted to be on a podcast, I would have invited you first. Well, um, I love you dearly. The most I want to interact with uh, Chasing Kojima, other than listening to it, is um, those tweets I make uh, about every time you do an episode uh, summarizing what what Chasing Kojima is about, which I was thinking about the other day. That's a good fucking bit. <laughs> you would also tag Kojima in it. Yeah, I would. <laughs> this is the worst part. And Kermit. It made me so uncomfortable. I hate that about Twitter. Um, I mean, being being as I am someone who has personally talked with some administrative assistant at Kojima that's Productions true. via email while I was in Tokyo, um, I feel like they would be okay with me forwarding those podcast episodes to that that's same email. That's true. So, you know. So, folks, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, be on the lookout for the next Kojima news. Uh, which will probably be his podcast, and it'll just be an episode of us summarizing up his podcast. Um, so look forward to that. Hopefully, uh, the Burgermeister himself will come down from his castle and begrudgingly record it with me uh, if we can figure out the scheduling. Um, so we'll figure <laughs> that out. It'll be great. The last episode of this podcast came out on September first, twenty twenty one. Yes, it did. And and my my tweet was it's my favorite podcast about chasing. Hideo Kojima En across the Arctic tundra for months with nothing but a rifle, a Bowie knife, and the will to ask why the Zone of the Enders mechs have penises. <laughs> why wouldn't they, Chris? Why wouldn't they? I'm just asking. Uh, that was the opening night live bit. I know you all hated it, but I like to go through those because it's my fucking show. Uh, moving I'm not on. Gonna stop you? I don't work here. Yeah, <laughs> I don't work here. What? Who are you? Um, <laughs> I'm like, did you say I'm a couch? I said get out. Oh, I just realized I wrote stream instead of steam there. Everyone's clicking near me. Stop doing <laughs> that. Was, that. Was, I saw the, the, the link highlight came up. I was like, oh, let me jump in. I saw somebody <laughs> else. Click. I was like, this looks fun. <laughs> oh, I hate this document. Um, and now on to some more serious news. Sony is facing $5.8 billion lawsuit over PlayStation Store royalties. Uh, Sony is facing legal action in the UK uh, because they're claiming the company ripped people off by taking a 30% cut on all transactions made on the PlayStation Store. Um, I'm kind of paraphrasing the article here. Sony, like other big companies, takes cuts on their store. Uh, But consumer rights activist Alex Neal is claiming that that is a breach of consumer rights. Uh, quote, gaming is now the biggest entertainment industry in the UK, ahead of TV, video, and music, and many vulnerable people rely on gaming for community and connection. The actions of Sony is costing millions of people who can't afford it, particularly when the midst of cost of living crisis and the consumer purse is being squeezed like never before. Um, the nitty gritty here is this claim is filed with the Co- Competition Appeal Tribunal. Um, it's just like I, I get it. Consumers will not be liable for any legal fees should the case win. Um, you know, get them. Go get them. Go get them. Yeah. Some. Who cares? Uh, I don't think you're going to win. Uh, I think, sure, I get it. <laughs> but, um, you know, go get them. You get them, pal. You make them pay. I will take my cut. Um, but I feel like Sony is an anti-consumer, and I don't think they would ever adjust their prices due to inflation or any any such thing um but moving on i've to never next... never heard of them doing anything like that so yeah, yeah it'd just be crazy but moving on to the next news story which is a, funny enough of a playstation blog playstation put this out uh the ps5 price to increase in select markets due to global global economic environment including high inflation rates weird, weird right that, that's yeah. so weird yeah. um <laughs> yes folks you heard that right ps ps stands for penis I love you. Sucks. Uh, PlayStation, uh, Sony is increasing the prices, PS, I love you, uh, of, uh, their PlayStation 5 consoles in Europe, UK, Japan, China, Australia, Mexico, and Canada. Not the good you, you old, the old UFs of A, uh, because we're too cool. But they, right. um, I believe it, was it 30% increase? Uh, I actually have a breakdown, uh, somebody, somebody on Reddit 
broke it down Break in down. USD. So Break in Europe, down. it is going up by $50. In the UK, it is going up by $35.50. In Japan, it is going up by $36.64. Uh, by Australian standards, it is going up by 35 USD. And in China, it is going up by $58.42. Wow. Yikes. Wow. I'm sorry, did I delete that link by accident? Did you have that in here? No. Wait, which link? No, I thought that Reddit link. I thought it might have been in here because I remember deleting no, the link. I, I literally have it on like a notepad thing. Oh, you on, rock. Cool. On my Sorry, desktop. I was afraid. I cleaned up this thing beforehand and I remember there being two Sony PS5s and I was afraid I deleted it. And you were going to nah, me after the stream like you always do. Um, no, yeah, that's crazy, stuff. right? It seems kind of crazy that they're increasing it's, prices. It's a significant amount, um, especially, I, I mean, like Europe, like 50 bucks is not nothing like that is that's yeah a lot. that's like a game it, yeah well that's not not a not a playstation 5 game that's true not a playstation 5 <laughs> game um yeah that's kind of like uh, so since this microsoft has come out with a statement saying they're not raising any prices anywhere uh which is great uh and then uh, i don't think nintendo said anything but i can't i don't see nintendo doing that sort of thing they're uh, rolling in money so yeah they're rolling in money uh, yeah, that's just that's kind of wild. I just, I, uh, I, the 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 controller reveal, and we didn't talk about it yet. But the PSVR two coming uh, in twenty twenty three reveal v via Instagram sort of makes sense. I wonder if like they're trying to get the good news out before the bad news. But I'm I'm even shocked they didn't put this on a Friday five p.m. thing so no one was around to write about it. Like yeah, uh, it's, it's just. just it seemed like so much this week, like especially just so much Sony stuff kind of coalesced. And mm. I I don't know. I, I saw this and I, I thought it was going to be like, oh, yeah, they increased the price in like some random country. But it is across the board other than the U.S., which I I have to imagine they didn't do the U.S. They probably did a bunch of market research. But in my mind, they, they didn't let it affect the U.S. because they knew so many people would complain. <laughs> Whereas like, yeah, we can handle the rest of the world, but we can't handle Americans. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they'll, they'll, oh, I can't even. Tell it wouldn't be the, wouldn't be the first country to say that. Um, sorry, I'm just. I noticed my r recording for this podcast failed, which annoys me to the nth degree. Oh, maybe when I slam my keyboard, it undid. Anyways, um, yeah, it's just wild. It's like you guys said. Uh, it, it, it's just I I it's just weird. Uh, I, they first Meta increases the prices of their quests, and we all make fun of that because they're yeah. a shit company. And I can't believe I called them Meta. It's fucking Facebook. Uh, and they increase their prices on that, and now we're like, it's just it's wild, folks. Um, the last thing I wrote in here quick because I just thought of it uh, when we were talking. The uh, Valve came out with an update to the Steam Deck and said, "Hey, we've got too many of these things. We're doing great." Uh, we're just making them and we're having no issues. So we're pushing everyone's queue times back. Um, I know David of uh, Save Data Fame, Save Data Fame, uh, got pushed Thank from Q4 to Q3. And he said today it had him fully check out and he got a shipping email. I don't think it's shipped yet, but uh, that's wild. Mine, I ordered mine. I pre-ordered mine in July. I did the reservation for $5. I'm still in Q4. I'm not like sitting here waiting for it so i wasn't expecting to be in q3 but it's just it's wild that they're they're a they're being so successful which is great for them and b they're they seem to not be be impacted by any of these uh supply chain issues and they're actually making more than they expected which makes me realize they probably forecasted for supply issues and now that they're not having them they've kind of come through so that's exciting. Uh, I'm excited to get hands on with that when it eventually comes out, um, or when I eventually get mine. It'll yeah. Cool. What what, uh, what version did you get? Just the base, uh, or I did the the top tier, baby. Okay. I just went. Awesome. I said if I'm gonna pre order something, I'm gonna pre order the big boy. Um. So I did that because I'm crazy. Yeah. My uh my my one of my best friends Vanveer just got his, and he he was one of the people that got bumped up basically, or they oh, they nice. might have been bumping bumping up people prior to announcing that they were because he was like, yeah, I wasn't expecting, and then randomly I got an email today saying it was shipping, and then he got it like two days later. So that's very um, cool, awesome. I guess if you if you've pre-ordered it, also or reserved it or whatever, 
you're gonna get it before Christmas, hopefully. Um, yeah, so I'm pumped. I I'm almost never an early adopter, so I kind of want to waited for like I kind of wanted to wait for the Steam Deck version two or whatever in like a year yeah. or two or three. However, you know, I I just I didn't want to be that first adopter thing, but I'm super pumped to get my hands on it once once my friend gives it to me. And uh, yeah, I want to hear I want to hear your thoughts, Will. Yeah, I, I'm excited. I, I, I'm the same with you. I'm usually not an early adopter, but um, with the analog pocket, it, I waited till reviews came out and then they opened it up again. So I ordered that and I got that and I love it. And then with this, everyone at work who had one just raved about raved. it. Like there's a couple people who just exclusively use it for most of their Steam games now. So I was like, awesome. you know what? I'll put in a pre-order. Like I was not expecting any of this stuff. So I was like, I'll just put in a pre-order or a reservation they call it uh, it's five bucks uh and so i just put it in and i was like oh we'll see if i get it and so we'll see if i get it in uh in december also i was like i'm putting in a reservation i was expecting it to be like t summer 2023 and it was like oh you're october to december and i'm like that's not that far away like <laughs> that's i feel soon. like i could have just paid for it now um yeah. but it gives me time to save up uh save up uh, put it on a credit card. Money bags. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, Pay off my credit card enough to, yeah. Uh, Ian Gibson but... money over here, this guy. <laughs> yeah. uh, if only, if only. Um, that is the top news of the week. Now to the middling news, as we like to insult it. Uh, we'll go through this one a little bit more quickly, and then the cut line news, we actually say 10 times speed, so you're going to have to slow down your, your podcast app here and uh, and uh, really take a really take a listen. Uh, middling new Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic remake, we covered this last week, uh, was changing studios, and now it is official, it has changed studios. This is from a Bloomberg article from the one, the only Jason Schreier. Of course, I can't read the article, because it's, uh, it's, uh, it's Bloomberg, but... Oh, I, thought, I thought you just couldn't read. No, I'm literate to, in Spanish, but not English. Um... But they have moved from Texas-based Aspire Media to Eastern European, uh, one of Saber Interactive's Eastern European studios. Uh, we covered this last week. Saber Interactive makes some fun games that I really enjoy. Uh, so I think they'll handle this pretty well. Uh, and hopefully it'll be good. I'm excited. Are you guys excited for this remake? Yeah. I I, I mean, I, I don't think I've ever played anything from, from Saber. So... I mean, yeah, I trust your opinion of them. So if you say that they've done good work in the past, then I will assume that they will try and do good work in the future. Um, I love KOTOR, both both entries. And um, I mean, just don't fuck it up. <laughs> yeah. Like, just just put put some heart and soul into it and, and it'll be good. Um, yeah. Totally. Yeah. World War Z, I really enjoyed for being a game based off of a not great movie and a movie mm. based off of a pretty great book uh and then uh a snow runner mud runner um great games as well so uh i'm looking forward to this uh i think it'll be i think it'll be fun. it's just and, and they have a lot a of source cursed, material so it's such a cursed franchise though like it, it really is. is true the first Those? one came out and is great and then is impossible to play years later um because it runs like absolute dog ass on everything and then two, of course, got pushed out. Like what is like eight months before it was supposed to, or something yeah. like that. Although there's a lot of cut content. Two is yeah. great. They're officially releasing the cut content onto non PC platforms as like nice. free DLC. Yeah. Um, the there was first a huge game... effort. So, you go, no, no, you go, go you go, you go, you go. I know, I know there was a big effort of the modding community to do that, um, and then I think there was such an effort that like. It might have been Aspire Media. I can't remember who ported it. Um, I think it was, but then they just decided, okay, we'll just make this official because all the assets are there, everything's there, um, which is awesome. I mean, I, I love that. I love that there was there's such a love for this series, and you know, I'm I'm a big Obsidian fan, and they had a lot to do with that that the writing of of that second game. I think is phenomenal. Um, so I, I I'm happy that it's being released into the wild but yeah sort of like chris said a, a little tentatively excited about this yeah i think i after fallout new vegas i think i might play kotor 2 uh i'm on a bit of an obsidian kick so i think that would be fun um that first kotor is backwards compat on the xbox series x so i should 
I should boot that up and see if it works because I have one it's, or two. It's, it's the least buggy there. way to play that game for damn yeah. sure. I'm never playing it again. I have played it four times and my save has corrupted every single time. So I can't I can't play on what is the first Talos Talos the first planet can't do it Karth can't be there again. Yeah, I think and, it's Talos. Yeah, and, last maybe. You go into the underground. You do the swoop races, and then you help the people with the rag Ragnarok disease. Oh my god, the you gotta fucking get the under Sith city outfit so to long. go into the thing, and then I just I can't do it again. I can't. And Mushkarabara. That is the phrases in those games I have ingrained in my brain. Um. So yeah, maybe I'll play too. Uh, Gravity Rush, the 2012-2013 game, uh, is getting a film based on the PlayStation... Why do they... Oh, because people who read Deadline don't understand what video games are. Gravity Rush film based on PlayStation game. So sick. <gasps> it works from PlayStation Productions and Scott Free. Uh, yeah, is this a live-action movie? I saw Ian's uh, in Discord so. wrote... It better be anime or something like that, which I, mean, I took a little negative, but I don't think it needs to be. But it's also it's Scott Free, which is uh, Ridley Scott's production company, I believe. I would that would lead me to believe that it is live action, but I, I don't. Be. I know. can't imagine Ridley Scott making an animated film, especially an anime. Um, where in the I anime, just, I. Uh... I just read it at the bottom of this article. I can't talk about this. <laughs> what? Anyways. <laughs> so I'll shut the fuck up now. Oh, uh, that's fantastic. But don't, you love to see it, folks. You love to see people's <laughs> things come up at work. Uh, not at work. Uh, moving on. Uh, I just think it's, it's interesting. Um, I, as someone who's never played Gravity Rush, it just like, it's not, to me, it's not a common zeitgeist video game so it seemed like a weird pull and i wonder if someone there is like was rooting for it which is honestly a good thing because that means they they have a good idea or they might have a way of of making it into a good film so it'll be fun to see i think live action could work uh i think i do agree with ian i think the style of that game i think lends itself to anime i can see that being the the proper deranged thing to say um deranged what a yeah crazy i agree with man. ian oh oh yeah i am deranged <laughs> Um, another update from last week, uh, we had a rumor, uh, an actor for, or working on, working at Ubisoft posted some pictures of mocap sessions and they had Marvel written on them and they had Blade. Um, so <laughs> Ubisoft went and tweeted out after that. And after that episode, it was just like a day later. Sorry to slice up the rumors. We're not making a Blade game, but we can't wait to see what our friends at at Marvel Studios are cooking up for next year's movie. Um, Sorry to slice up the rumors. <laughs> they're making they're making a Fruit Ninja. Uh, we don't mean to suck all the blood out of these what, rumors. What fucking PR person did that? And was like, it's good. Send it out. Especially on like a tweet that is like denying something. Like you're still being like cutesy about it. It's like, what the? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, this makes me think they're still making a Blade game. <laughs> like, none of this makes me think they're not making a Blade game. Slice Up makes me 25% more confident that they're lying to me. <laughs> Slice Up a couple rumors with your fat hose. We're not making a Blade game. Like, what is this? Uh, I think you should leave. Um, Absolutely wild. Right, so, at this point, honestly, who knows if there is a Blade game being made by Ubisoft or not. Or if they're mocapping for a movie, but me thinks there's a Blade game on the horizon, which I have no affinity for Blade. I've never seen and Blade. I've never seen Wesley Snipes at a local grocery store robbing a man. I have never seen that. I'm not saying I haven't seen that, officer. Um, but who knows? Are you Blade fans? My boys here, Blade fans. I've never seen it. I'm like excited Jake's for the new one, fan. just just because Mahershala Ali is in it. But he is fantastic. He's I'd let great. him He's hit great. me on the side of a bar and tell you that much. Uh, um, in Blade Two, Blade kills a vampire with a vertical suplex. So is that the Gamma del Toro one? It is. Okay, I knew he liked suplex. <laughs> and and Robert Rodriguez, I believe, is involved. He's in the mix. He's. I saw him outside of our former work establishment during Comic Con. 20 uh, he was just a producer 19 
would have to have been uh he was in our building i think they rented a room for him to like be in before they went over to New York Comic Con and I met him in the what's the the vestibule between the inside and the outside and I was like hey, yeah. I think that's Robert Rodriguez and it was it was him so I spit he was like, on him <laughs> he was like I'm about to ruin this man's Star Wars experience <laughs> <laughs> uh, fuck I forgot he's in that <laughs> wait what is he in Robert Rodriguez directed the Book of Boba Fett. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. And, and two episodes of The Mandalorian or whatever. So oh, I didn't know I about didn't that. Know. Or thought... one, one episode of The Mandalorian. I can't you remember. Know, but... I was thinking he was in Star Wars, but then I realized that was Benicio Del Toro. So you're thinking of Benicio Del Toro, who is not, not, not even related to Guillermo Del Toro. Those are different motherfuckers. <laughs> no, I know they're different, but like in my brain, I was like, is Kyle thinking Benicio Del Toro is R no. R Rodriguez? And I'm like, no, I don't think he is, but that's the only he's person I can think of from Star Wars. He's got that stutter gimmick. Everyone loves it. <laughs> it's him and Mark Hamill in Star Wars. That's all I remember. <laughs> <laughs> the two yeah, main was, characters of Star Wars, Wars. Benicio del Toro and Mark Hamill, as I just themselves. Love it. Yeah, he throws the lightsaber over his shoulder. It gets the blue milk. Uh anyways, uh, fuck, we gotta get out of here. The cut line here, folks. I'll say it during the outro. Uh, I don't want to talk over music, actually. Say. <laughs> No, I will anyways. Who gives a fuck? Fuck uh, <laughs> Saints Row is bad and we all knew it would be, so no one's surprised. Bad. That's the Reddit thread I was thinking of, Kyle. Yeah. No, I put it at the bottom. I know. I, I, I knew. Yeah. I knew you just wanted to gloss over it. I know. I'm sorry. It's bad though. <laughs> I was watching it some glitch bad. compilations and two uh, the a guy the one of the the guide's editor at GameSpot got soft locked out of the entire game. He can't shoot with his gun anymore. And Dan wow. Reichert at Giant Bomb, GameSpot's sister site, couldn't had a game breaking bug 12 hours in and had to restart the game. Oh my god. Folks, it ain't good. It looks like a solid 7 out of 10 uh if it didn't have the bugs and I would probably pick it up if it was on Game Pass. But you know what? Ain't gonna touch it. Uh, as I say here in radio, ain't gonna touch it. Uh, the Game Awards, Ian's favorite show of the year, is December 8th this year. It's a Thursday. There won't it's always be a, local a fucking chat. Thursday. There'll be a, a... I forget what we do. Do we do predictions? I think that's what we do. I think who, so. Who knows? I don't know. I hate all of you. Uh, oh, this one's actually interesting. The um, emulator for the Wii U on the computer went open source, uh, finally proving that they did not steal code from Nintendo. Uh, because why else would you go open source? Uh, and then my favorite news of the week, folks, is here right at the end. Tintin is a new game. Tintin Reporter, Cigars of the Pharaoh, 2023. Kyle Bailey, Chris Elliott, thank you for being here today. Kyle, people can find you on the internet at Kyle the Beard. Chris, people can find you on at Save Data Team at Chris Save Data Data. Chris, Chris Data came. Cane, canes, canes, chicken. Raising canes. Raising canes, chicken. They can find you. Find me at, at cum.biz. Cum.biz, <laughs> folks. And you can find all of our content at subpixelfilms.com. Bring you to our link tree. There's no music anymore. We're just here in the ether enjoying each other's souls. <laughs> fuck. Let's get the fuck. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye, bye everyone. Bye. <laughs>